What's happening everyone, it's David here again and in this video we're going to take a look at how to set up the Samsung Gear S3 Frontier with an iPhone. Uh, this recently gained iOS compatibility, uh, that means the functions of the S Gear, uh, Gear S3 Frontier will work with iPhones now as well as uh, Android. Uh, so we're just going to take you through a very quick uh, setup and how this works. So first thing we need to do is just switch on the Gear S3 Frontier. This has been reset to factory settings so you can see the exact experience you would get if you were to just buy one of these and set it up with your iPhone. Uh, so we're just gonna wait this, uh, wait for this to boot up one moment. Uh, while we're there, we'll just get the, the phone unlocked and ready. Okay, so the Gear S3 is now in pair mode ready. So all we need to do is go into settings and the Bluetooth's already on here. Just wait for it to search and find the gear. So there it is, so Gear S3 is there. Uh, but first of all, what we need to do is to go into the App Store and we need to download the Samsung Gear app. So we'll just uh, do a quick search for this. So Samsung, Samsung Gear, so there it is. So we just need to click on this and install. No, I've never actually tried this before. This has been paired up with my my Android phone for over, just over a month. So this is a new experience for me. Uh, I've read that some of the compatibility with the iPhone is, is not quite there yet. Some of the features aren't uh, fully integrated, but things like uh, messages and notifications will should work absolutely fine out of the box. So just gonna go ahead and open the app. So, okay, so Gear S would like to make data available to nearby Bluetooth devices when using the app, yep. Uh, allowed to send notifications. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect a gear. So there we go, it's just searching for the watch now. So there we go, it's found it. Connect a gear S3, 8A33, that must be the model designation. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect. Okay, so uh, when doing this on my Android watch, it wa uh, Android phone, sorry, uh, it was a lot quicker. Uh, so yeah, we're confirmed pass key, so uh, 800266, so pair. So we'll just connect it, we'll just click the tick here. Try again, so there we go, we're just setting up. Uh, so this is the same experience you have when you do it with your Android phone, but I was curious to see how it works with iOS. So far, so good. Okay, so. So here's a few, uh, few notices here. So you can improve your gear experience by allowing access to the following info, location, contacts, calendar, and photos. So we'll enable that. Allow Gear S to access your location even when you're not using the app. Allow. Uh, gear S would uh, like to access your contacts. So the reason for this is because the gear does have uh, a built-in speakerphone, which you can just see just there, the three holes. And we've also got a built-in mic, which is just next to the, if you don't know if you can see that, let's see. There we go, just underneath the, the home and power button on the Gear S3 itself. So yeah, I'd like to ask this calendar, uh, photos. I'm not quite sure with photos, uh, I mean, there is a, a gallery app which you can see photos on the watch itself. So we've just got to agree to the, uh, the license terms and conditions, SL privacy notice and report diagnostic info. So we're just gonna click done and finish, okay. Okay, so uh, this is basically out of the box. So we've got this fantastic rotating bezel here. So we're just gonna go, let's try it. So turn the bezel clockwise to view widgets. So we'll go ahead and do that and then uh, turn it back to view the watch face once again. So here's the watch face. And then we can just turn anti-clockwise and this will show us some of your recent notifications. So it's telling me it's great. So then we press the back key, which is this one here, just up on the side. And this takes us back to the watch face. Uh, so swipe down from the edge to view status info. So if we pull down here, so this tells us some of the essential information about the gear. So it tells us the battery life that's left, how it's connected. This does have built-in Wi-Fi, so it can be used standalone without Bluetooth. So then we swipe up again, and this takes us back to the to the main page. And then we click the uh, the menu stroke power key, which is this one on the bottom bottom right by here. Okay, and then we just press again, and this takes us back to the home screen. So we're nearly there. Cover and touch the screen with your palm to turn off the screen. So this has obviously got a built-in ambient light sensor built into the screen, so there's no flat tire like you'd see on Moto 360 and the Fossil watches, for example. So we'll just cover the screen. Okay, I think I was uh, a bit too long there, so cover the screen. 
Okay, try again. There we go. So we're all done. Enjoy your gear. We will. Okay, so that's basically it as it stands out of the set of experience. So looking at the gear manager itself. So this is uh, pretty much the exact clone of what you get on Android. So if we click in settings here, uh, this is allows us to see uh, notifications. So it allows you to tailor uh, how you'd like the notifications sent to the watch. Uh, so notifications, uh, when the watch is on, it just, just gives a very subtle buzz on your wrist. And then when you wake the watch up, you can access the apps. Usually there's a small orange dot usually which appears at the nine o'clock position. You'll just simply swipe left here and then that will take you to your most recent notifications to get rid of those. You just swipe up and then that gets rid of the notification from the screen. So uh, you can also have the screen turn on automatically. Uh, so this is particularly useful, for example, if you're gonna go to the uh, for a trip to the cinema or for somewhere you need privacy, for example, if you've got a meeting at work, for example. Uh, so by keeping this off, this will allow the, the watch to just give a very subtle buzz on your wrist and you know there's a notification which you can read later, or you can switch this on and it'll light the screen up whenever you get a notification through. Uh, this also allows you to auto show details, show the details of the new notifications automatically while in full screen pop-up view. And then the notification indicator, which I was just speaking about, show a yellow indicator on the watch face when there are unread notifications. So if we just go back, uh, so if we just click into info, so this is slightly different to what we see on Android. On Android, you would usually see uh, there's a, a few circled icons just across the top of the screen here, and that shows you essential information about the gear. Um, the S Health information would usually show here, you'd have to obviously install the app onto the phone as a companion. And at the bottom here, we've got suggested apps. Uh, there's usually a set selection of watch faces, being a smartwatch, there is absolutely stacks of watch faces that you can download for free. Uh, there are also some for purchase. Some are a little bit overpriced, uh, in my opinion. Uh, however, there is a massive, massive choice should you need to change the watch face. Personally, I, uh, I was pretty much happy with the built-in watch faces. If you just need to change those, you just push and hold and then scroll across until you find the watch face that you want. There are some sort of sport related ones. Uh, there's some much more minimalistic like this one, for example, you just click and press. It'll automatically adjust the time. And there we go, we've got this. Uh, this is pretty cool watch face. You've got a very smooth floating oil which goes around the screen here. So uh, just gonna show you uh, how a notification works live. So I've got my, my other phone here with me. Uh, so we're just gonna send a quick SMS. Okay. Okay, so uh, I just felt the watch buzz on the table. So as you can see, uh, as this is the, the first time we've had a, a live notification, uh, the watch is actually telling us uh, a very quick tutorial on how to read the notification. Uh, so you can obviously swipe the bezel uh, anti-clockwise to view the notification, or uh, you would usually be able to swipe just left from the screen and then you would be able to see the message itself. So uh, you can actually interact and actually reply to this if you just click on the message itself. Okay, so it's not allowing me to do that. And it do, on Android, it does allow me to actually reply to the message, which is a bit strange. Okay, perhaps that functionality is not actually built in uh, with iOS. Uh, I will check that out actually, uh, because it definitely on Android, you can actually just click on and it will allow you to tap out and tap out a reply using the built-in keyboard. The built-in keyboard is a little bit cumbersome, but usable uh, after a, a short period. So we're just gonna try another notification again. Okay. Okay, so let's see if this will allow us to do it again. So if we swipe left, and then we click on the message itself. No, nope, for some reason it's not allowing me to, to reply on here. So perhaps that's something which is gonna be built into uh, future revisions uh, of the iOS compatibility. Uh, yep, there's definitely no there's no integration to actually reply to the message. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, obviously, you know, the biggest uh, user base for uh, iPhone is more than likely gonna have an Apple Watch. So this isn't gonna be a deal breaker for many. It's good to have the notifications available on the wrist, but I was quite surprised. This is the first time that I've been doing this. So I was surprised to see that you don't have the reply notification using the watch as standalone. So uh, obviously, let me just unlock this again.
this is uh, this is still quite new. The integration has only been actually introduced in the last month or so. Uh, it's good to see that Samsung are supporting other handsets. Uh, this doesn't support Windows Phone. Not surprising, really. That is a, that is a platform which obviously doesn't have much support at all. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if that's going to be wound down sooner or later. With Nokia back on the scene this year, uh, we are hoping, obviously, that they're going to come back with a, sort of a big bang. And it, it does seem to be that they're going the way of Android. Uh, I did notice with their new phone, the Nokia 6, uh, there's not full Android uh, integration. For example, in the Google Play services. However, uh, hopefully in the coming year that's what we're going to see but anyway uh, this is about ios and how the the actual watch integrates with the handset overall um this is serviceable i wouldn't say it's as comprehensive comprehensive as it is on android however it is nice to see the support and you know we do have the same settings here which allows you to manage uh, how the apps appear on the watch and how you can manage and reorder that um so overall you know good job uh, obviously things are going to work out better over the long run as they add more updates and update the app uh, so I have done a video about the Android integration, how the watch obviously set up with that. Uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Uh, please like this video if you like what you see here. And leave me a comment down below and I'll be I'll do my best uh, to reply. Uh, but as always, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.